cause trouble. Because I know a lot of times you just come out here to cause trouble. You're nothing but trouble sometimes, Bob. 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 These are my Macho Man Randy Savage approved cutting glasses. So they're, they're super dark and they're actually made for cutting. You get them at a, at a welding supply shop. So don't growl at me. I know I should put on a long sleeve shirt, but it's 100 degrees and I'm not going to. Use the force. So it is that meme that was like, it was exactly that moment when Mike realized he fucked up. So we got this guy off, pretty good. Um, yeah, I think I punched through like right there. Now this one, I was doing, I was minding my own business, cutting, and sometimes those, those plasma beams just do crazy stuff and it just went right into it and I saw the, the, the rag. <laughs> the napkin I'd stuff in there to keep it clean kind of pop out on flames and I was like shit you are pointing this thing straight down and uh, it probably cut well it did cut into the tube so this is like sliced through here and one little spot right there so I did a shitty job there and uh, I'm gonna have to fire myself but we'll get this cleaned up and uh, I already kind of know what I need to do to shorten these guys where this is at we'll just grind that out once we got the jig in place we'll just grind that out and just weld it back up it's not a not a huge deal for what i'm doing and uh yeah we'll just get the uh old grinding disc out and uh get to it who doesn't who doesn't love grinding right everybody likes grinding We uh, clean these ends up, and uh, most of these marks are from when I, this thing had this, this is a 2006 uh, Mustang rear end, which I've already probably told you guys that six million times, but uh, the reason I got this was it was 31 spline, and I didn't know that it, they made it significantly longer from the other 8.8s in the family, and I thought, you know, of course I could just get away with it, and I didn't, that's why we're doing all this, but this thing was covered in brackets, because that thing's got a ton of bracketry on it so I had to cut all those brackets off and I I mangled it up pretty good uh, when I did that it was my first time really uh, cutting brackets off from the plasma cutter and uh, and I didn't really bother to fill up any of the holes like pits because they really weren't that deep and overall the structure is fine um, that and I was thinking that you know if I start coming in here and putting heat you know in these little pits that I made that uh, that then it might bend the axle you know everybody's worried about bending the axle so um here's what i did on this side I just gouge these guys out with the cutter and uh, we're going to go back there and fill that stuff in but i'm going to do five eighths on the driver's side because it when i put this all in there it got shifted just a hair over that side and you could tell when it squatted it kind of ate one tire kind of bit into the sidewall of one tire and not the other one so um i know it's over about an eighth of an inch so we're going to take two and five eighths out of one since we're getting custom uh, axles made anyway and we're going to take uh two and a half inches out of the other one is the plan we're not gonna we're probably not going to nail that perfectly 100 percent, but that's all right because the way we've devised to measure this 
uh, post narrowing, we'll be able to get this uh, good accurate readings to give the axle guys at Mosier so they'll know exactly what size because they said all they need to know is how much you're taking out of them so um, I'm gonna clean up this disaster in here and check on our prints but we can do all this we can get this done guys don't sweat it this is easy easy work I might start doing this for a job version one version two drum roll Let's see, hopefully what we got, Bill. Right, right in there. This guy. Ooh, that's about, that's good. That's good right there. That's good, that's winter. Let's see how it feels on our bar. We know this guy was on here and it was a bit wiggly. This guy. You know what? It's still a bit wiggly. <laughs> Eight hours later. I think that I am going to pull probably about five more thou out of that and uh, see where it ends up at, man. God, this is frustrating. The outside diameter is good, though. Outside dammer is a wiener. Okay, I think if I add in, me make this hole smaller. By 10,000, that should give us like 2,000 clearance. So I'm gonna make that hole, that's quite a bit. Shouldn't be that, can't, that, that won't work. That will not work, so um, yeah, we're gonna have to remake this whole goddamn thing. Version five. God, Mike, you're so dumb. So uh, outside, uh, I'm probably just gonna add maybe uh, another couple thou out because it was it was good, but might as well make it fit nice and snug if we have to reprint the whole thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write it down. So plus. Point zero zero so three. Make it three. And then on the inside we are going to go uh, minus zero one zero. So ten thou ten thou smaller. And that's we'll print that again. Yes. So in case you guys are wondering, I'm using a, a third probably only I probably get away with like 10% but I want it to be nice and strong and it is that so that's good but we're just gonna keep the that's what's taking so long because I have the infill of like 33% and probably could get away with like 10% probably even less than that but fuck it. so yeah we'll get this guy probably I mean, we got holes to fill we got stuff to do guys it's no big deal hey YouTube reverse <laughs> so uh yeah, we got these guys uh, done. Are we focusing? I can't tell if we're focusing or not. So uh, these are the inners, and there are there are all the measurements, right, y'all? Um, and these are the outers, and there are the measurements for that guy right there. So these guys will go. They press into. You actually have to kind of. Uh, use a driver, kind of pound them in a little bit to the housings, and you, I uh, did these guys with the M6 by 100 uh, screw, so you can screw that in, and clamp with, with uh, vice grips or pliers, and yank these guys back out. I've already tried it uh, with a test piece, and it works well. And as you can see. Yeah, so we're nice, nice and snug now. Like before, those guys just drop. And I actually took. So this is on the inner diameter is one point uh, five zero five. So that's, and then this guy I took a thou out of that because I wanted to be a little bit snugger on the uh, the ends. And as you can see, they they are snugger. <laughs> so. Still a nice good fit, but no movement there. 
and you know with these extra printed they're about three inches each so we got almost a foot of support for the bar itself across the housings now i know that a lot of people will be like well mike you're an idiot which is true <laughs> i don't dispute that fact but uh you're thinking like hey these guys are just gonna melt i, I don't know if i already covered this or not because my friend thinks that they're just gonna melt and uh, even if they do melt it's not a big deal but here's what i'm planning on doing is uh when we get these guys we'll cut this you're gonna set this up cut it and uh put this kind of in the middle and uh this guy is just gonna sit right here in the race like this so the only area it's really going to be touching is here it's going to get welded here and here so the the closest the heat's going to be is here um now mild still moves heat a lot a lot slower than like say stainless or uh aluminum does um it, it it has a tendency to stay in one place and it doesn't transfer as quickly so um also really what i think i need to do is just tack this up maybe in you know opposite corners 90 degrees opposing and then i'll probably run back and do another tack uh you know 90 degrees opposing for for you know a total of uh eight tacks and then we'll we'll stitch weld we'll flip it and we'll stitch weld and we'll stitch weld and what that will do is minimize the warping in the way we weld it uh we don't even need this guy in while we're welding it because once the tacks are on then that's going to hold everything in place while we weld it so uh that is my theory and uh either it will work or it won't <laughs> and uh yeah so you never know until you try and thank god that there's idiots like me to try so if it works then maybe you can save a buck or two by doing this yourself following these uh simple little steps at home and uh yeah i've already started welding on this guy and I said I was going to, it's like the next day or so. Um, but this had like a line of, of holes, like divots on it from where I was, uh, cut the original brackets off. You guys knew all that. And, uh, yeah, and this one had the hole in it. So I went ahead and filled, I still need to fill this guy. You see, it just grooved it out. So it's nice and clean and I'll just go ahead and cap that off. And, uh, then we'll start, uh, laying this out and cutting it so uh yeah i'm we'll finish up welding that guy and then we'll start with the measuring and cutting and cutting and measuring and grinding and all that good stuff should be too tough let's hope it's not too tough everybody likes welding shots right let's do some welding shots what the hell
All right, so we uh, got that hole filled in, got this hole filled in, and uh, put a nice kind of a tall cap. I'll go back with the uh, with the uh, sanding flapper disc and just smooth it out like I did this guy over here. And uh, yeah, so it's good to go. And uh, we can start making our templates to lay out to make our cuts.